This video is all about drawing legs. We're going to start with a basic gesture drawing form, work in our anatomy, tighten things up, add our lighting, and then bring things all the way to a finish. And then we're going to do a couple of examples just to show you a few different angles. I'm David Finch, and I've been a comic book artist for over 25 years. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, please leave them below. And if you have any questions about my tools, take a look in the description below. All right, I wanted to go ahead and start and show how I connect my legs to my pelvis. And so for my pelvis, I'm drawing a simple underwear shape, essentially. And from the holes, I'm drawing in my hip bones. And from there, I'm going to draw in my leg bones. And this is just a very simplified diagram of, of how they fit. And drawing in those major connections at the hips and making sure to reference those as you draw your legs will keep them in the right position on your body. And so we're going to lighten this off. And now I'm just going to very, very quickly rough in some legs using my underlying bone structure as a guide. I highly recommend working with this kind of a structure when you are learning how to get your legs to attach to your body properly. It's uh, something that I put quite a bit of time into and I recommend that you do it too. And so from there, we're gonna go ahead and, and start drawing in uh, an actual leg. This is the front of the leg and I'm drawing in a, a simple structure. The best way to learn these really is, in my opinion, uh, gesture drawing because that's essentially what this is. This is a gesture drawing of the overall shape of the leg. If you want your anatomy to work in a, an overall structure that looks pleasing, gesture drawing is really the only solution for that. So now that we've got our leg gesture drawn in, I'm gonna solidify it by drawing in my anatomy. And for this, I'm basically using football shapes, something I learned actually from a video Jim Lee did years ago. And I'm just drawing in my interconnecting muscle shapes. It's important for you to remember that they all interconnect with each other. And so you'll never have a muscle just going into nothing. It always has a definite start and a definite end and a, a football shape in between. And so I'm getting in the tendons for my lower leg here. Uh, I highly recommend that you get an anatomy book and learn where all these muscles go properly. Study it and work with it over and over again until you really have a sense of how the muscles interconnect. And then, you can do your own drawings like this. You want to make sure that you have the kind of shapes for your overall leg that you like, but you'll be able to draw in proper anatomy on top of it. And so now we're doing a leg from a rear view. And this is going to be the same basic operation. I'm drawing in my overall shapes, connecting them together. It's essentially a gesture drawing. and getting in my pelvis shape attached to the top here. This is the buttocks area and kind of come off of it a little bit. And now you can see I've drawn a little bit of a bump out for my hip bone there. And it's just an important reference point for me to make sure that I'm connecting my leg to the overall body properly. Whenever you're drawing any kind of a arms or, or your head connecting to your the top of your chest, uh, wrists, anything like that, your major connection points are what you want to focus on to make things look like they work together. And so I'm going ahead and just drawing in my muscles again, making sure that they connect up and that they all make sense together and they work as an overall whole. And this is all the kind of thing that I think is best learned from just proper anatomy books. One thing that you won't necessarily get from them though is a, a pleasing overall shape that gives you what you want for a comic book or for a design. They tend to be a little bit flat in my opinion. So you want to learn these shapes, learn gesture drawing, and then get all your, your anatomical shapes working on top of an overall form that works for you. And so now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw some examples. And so for my first example, I'm drawing one leg kind of pushed back just a little bit. You can see I started with a pelvis shape. I'm defining in my hip bone there and defining in my, my bone shape. I don't really do that when I'm, when I'm drawing, but just for the sake of uh, showing you, I want to show that I, I've got a defined shape in for my, my bone. And now I'm going ahead on top of my simple gesture drawing of my legs. I'm defining in my muscle shapes making sure that they all work together and everything's in there where it needs to be. And this is really 
is step two in my drawing process. Step one is a gesture of a figure getting the overall shapes the way that I like them. Step two is making sure that all the interconnecting anatomy and, and forms work. And then step three is erasing that down, which I'll do fairly soon here once I've got the other leg drawn in. And then actually putting in my line weights, putting in my shadow and bringing it to completion. And we'll get there in just a minute. And so now I'm getting my other leg in here defining the shape for my knee and I'm making sure to round my muscles on top of the knee around the knee instead of just drawing them flatly on top of it. And now I'm, I'm getting the bottom of the leg in at this angle. You really don't see much of it. So I'm just defining in really what I can see and what I need for the actual picture that I'm drawing here. And so now that I've, I've got that done, I'm going ahead and putting in my final detail. Most of the, the muscle structure that's underneath, I'm really not gonna be using because I'm lighting this from the left. What I'm doing is just using my underlying anatomy as a guide, making sure to accentuate my connection points like there on the center muscle of the leg. I'm drawing in my knee. I really like a darker shadow over the knee. It kind of gives it a bit of a, it, it's a bit of a plane change from the top of the leg to the bottom of the leg. If I really don't want a plane change, then I'll define it differently. So I'm going ahead and drawing some extensors. I guess those would be basically your toe extensors on the lower leg there. And I'm making sure because I can see all of my underlying form, all my underlying quick, quickly drawn shapes, I'm making sure to use those as a guide and follow those. And so my shadow actually is just shadowing from all of those underlying shapes. And I'm also making sure that I have an overall lighting that works over the entire leg because the entire leg is essentially a cylinder and the, uh, the shapes on top of it lie on top of it, but don't defy it as an overall form. I'm going to give it a bit of a cast shadow here just on the back of the, the upper part of the, the bent leg. And I'm starting to draw in the shadow for my lower leg here. And as I'm drawing it in, getting in my ankle bone. And then I'm realizing, you know, based on the angle, that whole area really would just be shattered out. It would be obscured by the body above it. So I'm doing that. And so now we're going to go with another example. This one's going to be a, a pair of legs from behind. It's really something that drawing comics and really, I think, drawing designs or, or anything, you won't encounter as much. So you want to, when you're studying, really try to concentrate on it because it's something that can become a weakness very easily. Anything that you don't encounter as much, uh, you just won't be as good at because you won't have the day-to-day -day practice working on it. And so I'm getting my overall gesture shape in here, just making sure that my broad forms are connected properly and sized properly, lighten it down. Now I'm going ahead and, and starting to do final detail on my, on my musculature, on my legs. I'm making sure that everything connects the way that it's supposed to and that the muscles are defined in the way that they need to be defined. Uh, I will often, Especially if I'm a little bit more uncomfortable drawing uh, certain types of anatomy, I'll go ahead and I'll do a, a simple gesture drawing. I'll get my anatomy defined. I'll erase it down. And then I will actually define my muscles again, make sure that everything really works and I really know where things go and I've got something that I'm happy with. I'll erase it down finally again and then start to put in my shadow. Generally, I don't need to do that, but I would recommend that that's something that you might want to consider when you're less comfortable with your anatomy uh, as many times as you need to erase i think it's it's a good idea to go ahead and do that and so i've got something that i'm, I'm pretty happy with i've got my anatomy drawn in here and now i'm going to go ahead and shadow i'm lighting this one from the right um, it's just an arbitrary choice really uh, and i i think if i had to really say i, I would probably I'm doing it because it makes it easier for me to light this leg. Not necessarily easier for me to light the other leg, but everything's a give and take. 
And so I'm making sure that you can see that overall leg, again, is a overall tube form. And so it's lit much darker at the bottom, and then it's a little lighter toward the forms as they, as they round up around the leg. And I'm just kind of touching up here and there. I want to make sure to get the undersides defined. You can see my ankle underneath the ankle. I've got a small bone at the knee that I'm, I'm trying to define. I would really recommend when you are learning your anatomy that you learn not only muscles, but you, you don't need to learn your overall bone structure. I, I think that can be a bit of a boondoggle. But learning where your major landmark bones are is, is a very, very good thing for keeping things grounded and so i'm getting in the lighting for the back of the leg here and there's a, a a bit of an inset in the back of the knee so i'm i'm drawing in a shadow to define that and then getting into the lower leg here his calf muscles are only defined by a shadow on the bottom of them and it's important that when you're putting in your lighting to not define your entire muscle, you want to just go ahead and define. You want to put your shadow away from the light and treat every object as a rounded form. So you're not shadowing up into the light. You're keeping your shadows condensed and well defined. And the bottom of his foot is, is away from the light, so I just went dark there. And so I'm, now I've got one final example. This is going to be a shot looking at the, the sides of the leg. It's a challenge unto itself because you have to learn how all of the muscles connect along the front and the back, but then how they also interconnect with each other along the side. And that is a study unto itself. So I wanted to make sure not to neglect that and get that in here. And so I'm getting my overall basic gesture drawing, making sure that it all works, getting it lightened down. And now I'm going to go ahead and start defining in my anatomy properly. I'm going darker with this than I, I would uh, ever for uh, an actual drawing that I'm doing for a comic. Not that it, it matters, I can lighten it down and it, it comes out the same, but I wanted to make sure that this is as visible as possible, all of the little shapes that I'm putting in here. And just bearing in mind that they're all interconnecting shapes, nothing just falls into space. And I'm getting my foot drawn in. And I've drawn a center line down the foot. I, I, it just sometimes helps me define it as a form in space. And getting his buttocks drawn in. There's a divot where the, um, the pelvic bone, the hip bone is there. And I've actually drawn a little circle to define that hip bone. And I'm drawing in just a little bit more of the body just to make sure that it's attached the way that I like it. And that helps me define where the other leg is. And often I'll draw a line across the hips from one side to the other to make sure that in perspective, my hip bones are lining up properly. And that's why it's such a useful landmark to use. And I'm getting in my other leg. It's difficult to see in this, but I can very, very clearly see my underlying um, gesture drawing. So I'm just getting all of my actual anatomy defined in on top of it. And now that I've got that in, I'm gonna lighten this one down and start to define my overall shape again with more of a, a reference for my underlying muscle. Getting the other leg drawn in. And you can see how much I've drawn in all the muscles underneath and even for just the outline uh, where they rest has a, an effect on the actual profile of, of the anatomy. And I'm still actually kind of defining my muscles here and there where I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with how it's all going together. Uh, and so even now I'm, I'm not lighting yet. I'm getting more of a, a finished uh, drawing in before I get the lighting. And so now here we go with the lighting. I'm lighting this one again from the left. Uh, I've got my, my frontal muscles. I'm lighting them much heavier from below because the lighting is coming from above and then uh, I'm making sure to define on the buttocks the the rounding of the divot toward the the pelvic bone, casting a shadow onto my other leg. 
and going down into the lower leg. And I try to make sure when I draw all these shapes, I make sure that they interconnect in a bit of a pattern. So I know that I've, I've got that defined in my underlying anatomy, but I want to make sure to not lose track of that when I'm, I'm starting to shadow. It can be very easy to lose, especially smaller muscle shapes. It can be easy to start to lose your connection points and things actually can start to look like you're drawing uh, tattoos on top of a sausage. I heard an artist say that once and I thought that was pretty funny and it's very true. If you aren't using your underlying anatomy effectively, that can absolutely happen. So I'm just getting down to the bottom of the leg here and a little bit of cleanup. I didn't like the connection from the upper muscles. There's a tendon lying down across that knee there and it just wasn't really looking the way that I wanted it to look. So uh, whenever that happens, it's so much of this is, is really it's knowledge, it's experience and practice. And then looking at what you're drawing and deciding whether you feel like it's working or not too. And you need to constantly be assessing what you're doing. Now in the upper leg of the, the further leg, I've actually defined some shadow shapes up into the light area, maybe a little bit more than I should have. I tend to like really striated anatomy. I'm drawing comic books and I want my characters to look really striated and muscular. And so sometimes I can exaggerate that a little much and looking at it now, I'm thinking maybe I went a little bit too heavy there, but for me, it's debatable. I'm just getting in the last of my lighting down through the foot a little bit of a cast shadow from the other leg onto the back of the foot. Now that we've got that done, I wanted to show just a quick example of a problem I see very, very often when people are drawing the muscles on the top of the leg as they connect to the knee. So I've drawn the knee in as a tube, essentially, and now I'm drawing the muscles connecting on top of it. And you'll notice that they round around that tube. And I'm trying to very clearly define that because if you draw those as a flat shape on top of that underlying tube shape, things really flatten out and it can also really fight with your foreshortening. For more on shadowing anatomy, check out my shadowing anatomy video here. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.